Luke 9 and 23. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my followers, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Wahar Rakakudash, the blind and semi apostles, the elders, and great millstone, the men that taught me this truth through the Spirit. Peace and blessings to the elect of the house of Israel that scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. The name of this lesson is going to be Bear Your Cross, the um, Shave Beard Discussion. And this is in response to you want to shave off your beard for a potential job. How can your faith be so weak? And this is in response to Apostle Gamal and a couple of the brothers. I believe the brother Manata Zakba had touched on this and um, the Apostle Taha had touched on this as well. And um, I'm doing my response through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And um, one second, I'm going to give it to that comment. Because this is, this is a comment from like a, this guy, you know, seem like a shit talker. But I can see new believers coming into this thing, having that question. And you have to be fully persuaded in your own mind. You know, that's a, 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 a novice question or a question that somebody that truly doesn't believe in the Heavenly Father and the Son and the words of the Bible. Because if you truly believe, then you already have the answer to your question. But somebody that's just coming out of the world, your faith, you're not really rooted in the words of the Lord. You're not rooted in Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shah. So I can see why you are skeptical or you have questions in regards of letting go of certain old mind frames and mentalities that we was raised with here in America. Because the Israelite man was effeminate, was raised effeminate in America. And he wasn't raised to be truly how the Heavenly Father intended the Israelite man to be, which is manly and have a beard on his face and to rule over his household, right? So I'm responding to this question. It says, this guy's name is Just Real Talk 100. What, should I keep the beard and get two, three B, BS jobs and work myself to death just for a room and board? And this is the common mind frame of our people you know, that get rich mentality, you know, make it out the hood, live comfortably, do what it takes to just escape. But with Jake feel and realize there is no escaping captivity. The only way we escape captivity is freeing our minds from captivity. And the way we free our minds from captivity it's coming back to the words of the Lord. Coming back to the instructions of the Lord. So Apostle Gabar did a response. Uh, 1 Timothy 6 and 8. Lord is where we're going to get that. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Yea, it will teach you character. Right? Having two, three jobs will teach you character. Right? Versus... You have one high paying job, but you lose your integrity, right? You lose keeping the instructions or the rules that the Heavenly Father gave us. And I posted Matthew 6 to 24. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other. You will devote to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And that's our people's problem. They choose to serve mammon. They choose to serve money. They'll do what it takes to get that dollar. The almighty dollar, right? Which the dollar bill is an idol, right? That's a talisman. 
with all type of satanic symbolism on it. They'll do what it takes to sacrifice to that idol, that false god. But they won't do what it takes to sacrifice to the true and living God. Which gives them life. Which gave you the trees to breathe, to give you oxygen, to give you the skies, the heavens, the waters. That gives you your children, that gives you health, that gives you everything that you see and can't see. They won't sacrifice to that God, but they'll sacrifice to a false God. So let's get it. Luke chapter 9. I'm going to start from the top again. Verse 23. In a KJV, it says, He said unto them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So you got to take up your cross, man. When you first come into this truth, when you first hear that you are a Hebrew Israelite, you hear that you God's chosen people, and you start to learn who the Israelites are, and you hear that, that the Heavenly Father gave the Israelites commandments. He gave, he gave the Israelite rules to live by. And then you start to learn that these rules are not in line with the way that the world lives or the rules of the world. And now you find yourself trying to compromise with what God instructed us to do. Versus what the world instructed us to do, so you, you you're gonna find you're gonna follow one or the other. You can't have it both ways. It's either you're gonna follow the heavenly Father's instructions, or you're gonna follow the instructions of the wicked, of your taskmasters, your slave masters, or that false god known as that dollar bill. So it says, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So we have to deny that feeling that we have when it's like, well, you know what? I don't want to lose my job, but I don't want to, you know, make the most high upset. It's either one or the other. Somebody's going to be upset. And I'd rather make the world upset or my job upset versus making the heavenly father upset, right? So it says, and follow me for whatsoever, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. So if you give up that high paying job and take on two to three jobs like this guy complained about, right? The Lord will have mercy upon you. The Lord will possibly sustain you. Right? And you got to remember that this is captivity. That's what our people fail to forget. Right? This is the land of our captivity. We was brought here to be slaves. In 2023, I don't care that you got your own car, you got your own house. As long as you have an ID and a social security card, you are a slave. I don't care if you get it, get on a plane and take a vacation and do this. Guess what? You still got to come back to slavery. Right? So, it says, for what is, what is a man's advantage if he gains the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but yourself lost or destroyed? Because you got to remember, a part of learning that you were Israelite, a part of learning that you God chose the people or you the real Jews, you learn that the, the Heavenly Father is angry at this place. That the, heady, the Heavenly Father has an indignation, meaning righteous anger, towards America for what they did to his people. Right? And that the Heavenly Father is going to destroy America. That's what you're forgetting. 
right? Do you want to partake in that destruction because you didn't want to keep his instructions, his commandments? Do you want to get destroyed because you had to get that bag? That's the question you got to ask yourself for you new believers and you knew, um, I just found out that I'm a real Jew, people. Sacrifice to the Lord or to money, you can't do both. Let's see, I'm going to get that scripture, Apostle Gabar quoted. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 8. And have a food and raiment. Let us, be, let us be there with content. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Because that's all you need. You just need the minimum. You don't need to be rich. You don't need to worry about generational wealth. You don't need to worry about legacy. All those black mantras, all those black quotes. You just need enough to take care of yourself. And to be able to pay with your bills and feed your family. Pay your tights and your offerings. And that's it. Don't try to have a large savings and don't be worried about that because the Lord is about to destroy this economy. He's about to destroy so-called 401ks and savings accounts. So you doing all that hard work to try to have a savings and get a retirement, don't worry about that. Now that's not to say, don't save your money and don't put away money and things of that nature, but your your heart or your goals shouldn't be to have a large savings account or a retirement plan, right? Because the Lord is planning to crash the economy. He's way he's doing away with the way we use money today, so he can implement. The mark of the beast, right? Which is the karagma, which is the chip, the radio frequency identification chip. We're going into a cashless society, right? Digital money. So don't get caught up into getting rich and making big, large wealth. Do what you got to do to to have um, so you could be content. Your daily bread to be able to feed your family, to pay your bills, and that's it. So it says, but they they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and to many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. It says, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. Yeah, such as women. You know, more money comes more women and becomes more lust. Now you want to travel the world and you want to jet ski and you want to ride on dolphins and you want to do a whole bunch of, you want to fucking skydive and bungee jump and you want to visit this place and visit that place, Right? You want to party with richer people, right? You want to do bigger things versus doing what the Lord commanded us to do, right? Fear the Most High, keep His commandments, believe upon His Son. And if you're a prophet, go out there and prophesy, right? That's what the Israelite man is supposed to be doing. An Israelite woman is supposed to be faithful to her husband, keeping the commandments, and raising her family, and be an example of womanhood to the rest of the sisters. That's the instructions for women, right? So it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through. With many sorrows, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Because people, once again, they won't grow their beard, right? They'll put on a dress, 
right? They'll do things that's contrary to their principles and their morals for that dollar. And I showed you that that dollar is demonic. That dollar is an idol. That FRN note is a talisman. It's straight witchcraft. And it literally has power over our people. But you finding out that you were Israelite, that you were a real Jew, it shouldn't have power over you. That thing should be powerless, right? It says some people craving money and have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Because it's never enough, right? You could reach a billion dollars, it's not enough. You could reach a billion dollars, it's not enough. Has shows you that life is more than money. Because look at the richest of rich people on the planet Earth. It's still not enough for them. And that's not going to give them everlasting life. And that's not going to save you from the day of judgment. Because unlike those billionaires and trillionaires, right? The millionaires. They don't believe in the Heavenly Father. And you finding out that you were Israelite, you're supposed to believe upon Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh And you know that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh has the power over life and death. And that makes you fear. And that's what makes you grow your beard. That's what makes you keep the commandments. Because you understand that your power has the power over life and death. And you don't want to die. You don't want to displease your father. Right? This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 5. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with things, with such things as ye have. For he have said, I will never leave thee nor for safety. Don't love money. Be satisfied with with what you what you have. For the heavenly Father has said, "I will never fail you. I will never abandon you." And this is what you have to believe in. This is what you have to trust. The words of the Lord and the word of the Lord is true. The scriptures say that the Lord is not a man that he should lie. Or the son of man that he should repent. The Most High is not a liar. He is a man of his word. So if he said he's going to take care of you. Food. Shelter. And um, clothing. You have to believe in that. Right? If you got a job. And you able to pay your bills and feed your family. Then you good. If you're able to move up in a position, the water Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. If you're able to get a better job and you're able to still keep your bed, the water Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah. Right? But if you're in the army, you are best to try your best to get out of the army. Why? Because once again, if you're in the army, you are subject to the army rules. And that is not the rules of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah. That is not the rules that the Heavenly Father instructed us with. That's why you're best to get out of certain positions in this world. Whether it's politician, whether it's a cop, whether it's military. Because now you have to obey the rules that interferes with your faith. And like the brother Benatah Zakba say, if you are in these predicaments or in these situations, in these places such as a nurse, such as a doctor, a lawyer, whatever, or, you know, a military, a cop, you got to try to um, be subtle, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, you know? So you tell them it's your Christian faith that you got to keep your bid. 
It's your Christian faith that you got to keep the commandments. You know? And if that don't work, you got to find another position, another job. Right? And then you have to put your faith into the Lord. Don't let money, don't, don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fill you and I will never abandon you. So guess what? If you get fired because you're growing your bed or you're keeping the commandments, the Lord would open up another door for you to get to provide for you because he will never fail you. He would never abandon you. Right? This is Let me get this. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. For even when when we were with you, excuse me, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. So you got to work. You got to get a job. You got to get a job, man. You can't be in this truth not working. You can't be a born again. You can't be a real Jew and not work. Because you got to provide. It's an Israelite's job to provide. Right? It's an Israelite's job to work. And then you have to make money not only for yourself, not only to help the house that you're in or provide for your own house, but to help the church out. Right? Because that will help brothers that need more help. And the Lord blesses the ones that have that that gives charity. Right? But you ain't supposed to be sitting on the couch all day playing video games or reading a bunch of books. You got to go out there and work. You got to hustle. You got to make ends meet. Because bills have to be paid. You got to be able to help your wife. You got to be able to help your husband. You got to be able to help the church. You know? If you don't want to work for yourself, at least work to help out the church. So it says, uh, let me get this. Matthew 16, it's 26. For what is a man, what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world, lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There you go. You keep your bed. You don't grow your bed. You keep that high-paying job or whatever position that you're in. But when the judgment comes, right, when the famine comes, right, what is you not having a bed? How is that going to protect you, man? You not having faith in the Lord, right? How is that job or that position going to protect you when the Lord brings the famine upon the earth? How is that job or that position going to protect you when the pestilence comes on the earth? How is that job or that position going to protect you when the thermonuclear fire happens, when World War III happens? And you're f and for the particular military brothers, you get sh uh, drafted off to war. How is that going to protect you? The Lord will protect those that sacrifice before these times of trouble come. Right? This is Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Right? And that's all we need. Our daily bread. That's all you need is food enough for the day. Right? And if you got some extra food that lasts you a couple of days, the water y'all buy some y'all shall. 
But don't be looking to be storing up food and let me prepare for this famine. And he ain't got to do all that because the Lord said he was going to never fail us. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 18. Neither their sil silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance a riddance of all of them that dwell in the land. Your silver and gold would not save you on that day of the Lord's anger. For the whole land will be devoured by fire of his jealousy. He would make a terrifying end of the people of the earth. And this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're afraid of. This is what we don't want to. We don't want no parts, no smoke of the Lord's anger. So if the Lord tell an Israelite man to grow his beard, or he told an Israelite man to do these certain things, we're going to do them. We're going to do them. That's it. I don't give a damn about no job. Right? I don't give a damn about no family members. I don't care if your woman don't like your bed. I'm going to do what the Lord commanded me to do. I got my scriptures all lined up wrong, but it's cool. Ecclesiastes 7 and 12. For wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. But the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Wisdom and money can get you almost anything, but only wisdom can save your life. And that's the message. Only wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the time. Isaiah 33 and 6. Right? Only wisdom can save our life. And what is the wisdom? That it isn't like man supposed to grow his big. We need money. We need money. Like the scriptures say, money is a defense. It helps you take care of the bills. It helps you, you know, whatever. You, you got to get a car. You need to go visit a family member. Whatever. But that's not the priority. The priority is the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 30 and 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. It says, first, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. And this is what the prophet was praying for, man. This is what the men of the Lord should be praying for. Just give me enough to satisfy my needs. You ain't looking for a future because tomorrow ain't promised. Who says you're going to live tomorrow? Right? So do what you got to do today. And pray that you make it to tomorrow. That's all we got to say. Lord's willing. This will happen. Our Lord's willing. We'll see tomorrow because we're just hoping that the Lord wills. That's it. It's not our will. You want a retirement. You want this position. You want this job. You got to let the Lord's will be done. So it says, feed me with food convenient for me. We just need what's going to get us by. That's it. If you have a little bit more, the wadi yawa ba shim yawa That's it. Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. And that's the message to all you new believers, man. You know, you, you don't want to be woke and broke. You know? But guess what? The way that this economy and the society is going is on a downfall. A downward spiral. Right? America's falling apart as we know it. And do you want to fall apart with this place? So repent. Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Don't fall down with this place. 
Come out of her, as the scriptures say. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Right? For it is polluted and it will destroy you with a sword of destruction. So the Lord is going to destroy this place. So it's like you get on the right side of the Lord or get on the destruction side of the Lord. Right? So I pray and hope that y'all was edified. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushah, Wahara, Kakwadash. Leave your comments, leave your questions, do your responses. Till next time, I say Shalom.